Welcome to Millennium Counseling Center's podcast, where each week we go in-depth into all things mental health, addiction recovery, and being our healthiest and happiest self. Enjoy. So Derek, today we are welcoming the founder of Millennium Counseling Center, and we are so excited for Anne to join us today. And just a few things about Anne. Anne started Millennium Counseling back when everything was in-person counseling. And I feel like today there's so much of counseling, which is great. More people are getting help, but so much of it is is kind of Zoom and through kind of virtual therapy. But really excited to hear about Anne's journey of starting Millennium Counseling back in 2004 and how all that started and what was going on then. So Welcome, Ann. Yes, welcome, Ann. Ann's been an important part of both Orin and I's careers and lives overall. So we're excited to have her on here. And she's been a super important part for many, many people and helped hundreds of people across the country. So welcome. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. As I've been thinking about doing this podcast, it's hard to believe that it's been 20 years that we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of Millennium Counseling Center. I'm still sort of surprised and in awe grateful to God for 20 years of this work and really can't believe where it went. <laughs> it's 20 years went by really fast. I started my practice in 1995 and it was through, you know, the leading and the calling of my higher power, whom I choose to call God, to help others. And after about nine years, my practice was really, really full. I was doing five experiential groups a week in 2003, I was seeing a ridiculous amount of individual clients, and I had a colleague say, we need more of you, and you need to expand. I also tell people that as a recovering codependent, getting calls from people asking to see me and having to say over and over again, I'm sorry, I can't help you, was killing me. <laughs> so I decided to expand, and I had a colleague and friend who was looking for an internship. And I thought, well, that's a good place to start. I'll bring on an intern. And during this time, the offices were right across the street from Millennium Park. But when I first moved into them, Millennium Park wasn't there. It was just railroad tracks. And they had decided to build this big, beautiful park. And so for the nine years that I was practicing independently, they were building the park. I was watching them. I saw how the bean was built and all of this. And so I had incorporated in 2003, and in 2004, when I decided to expand, I realized that I needed a name. And every name it came up with was awful. <laughs> and so I was on the phone with my mother. I said, Mom, you know, I cannot, I cannot think of a name for this thing. And God bless her, she's been gone for many years now. But the first thing she said was very pragmatically, well, honey, why don't you call it Millennium Counseling? It says where you are and what you do. And I was like, brilliant, let's do it. And so I called my attorney immediately and the name had not been taken, Millennium Counseling Center. And that was truly how Millennium was born. I brought in an intern, brought in another person that was looking to get their hours for licensure. And slowly but surely, we began to grow. We started in 8 South Michigan and started with one little office and then had another office. We ended up with four offices over there before we moved to the Wacker Place Suites, which was great because we were all together. So that's that's how it started. Yeah. And so I'm curious, like you were a private practitioner for nine years. Kind of what was your thoughts around what Millennium was going to become? And other than just not wanting to turn away people. What was at my heart and soul in building a bigger practice? And oh, by the way, I didn't want to do it. I was like, I don't want payroll. I don't want rent. I don't want to do any of that stuff. And of course, God had other plans. <laughs> and so I stepped out on faith to do it. And what I felt right from the very start, Orrin and Derek, was I didn't want this to be about me. People were sending folks to me, clients were calling, and they were asking for Ann Foster. I wanted Millennium Counseling to get to the place where they would be calling for Millennium Counseling Center, not for me. And as you both know, because you were there fairly early on in the process, those calls came for me, but we would move them to other people. And the beauty of where we are 20 years later is it's 
so not about me. It's about the quality of work that happens at Millennium Counseling Center, the wonderful clinicians that we have on staff, the sort of purpose and values, the core purpose and values that we have. I think there's a sign in the office. I can't remember the date, but I had done some work about coming up with a core purpose and core values. And and I think we still are maintaining those beliefs today. That's what it was about, the purpose and let it not be about me. I think the way you did it was fantastic and the way I understood it when I started here and how we've tried to continue doing that is that you have people who have, you know, more people know, they know your name, they know who they are. And when I first started here, almost 100% of the calls were for you. But (laughs) what your plan was, as I understood it, and what our plan is, is that you recognize that you needed to hire people who were really high quality people and therapists so that when they wanted to see Ann Foster and then couldn't, but this is who she thinks I should see. And then they go and they have a good experience with that. That's the only way that works. If there's a big drop off between who they want to see and who they're seeing, then it doesn't work. But I think you were brilliant in just really being very careful about the folks you hired and making sure that you had confidence in them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And there was two other pieces that I think were really important. One, I had come from a business background. I'd done real estate, advertising, marketing. And one of the things I'd come to understand in the nine years doing private practice is that therapists were notoriously very bad at marketing themselves and building practices and getting those referrals. And so one of the things that I wanted to do with Millennium Counseling Center was make it the best of both worlds, that someone could come and work for us and they would have all the business things taken care of for them because most folks aren't good at that. We would take care of all of that. They could set their own schedules, do therapy how they wanted, get trained how they wanted. And so it would be like private practice with all the stuff that they don't want to do taken care of. So that was the first thing. I wanted to make it such a wonderful place to work that no one would want to leave. (laughs) And that happened for a long time. It still does. And then the other thing that was clear to me was that if we brought in interns and we were very picky about who we brought in, If we brought in really wonderful interns and could train them sort of in the millennium way of doing counseling, then they would want to stay with us and continue on. And I would think, I don't know what the percentage is, guys, you would know, but we've retained so many wonderful interns who've become incredible clinicians over the years. And I think that was also at the heart of building millennium. And then a third piece is that I had made a decision that whoever we brought on, everybody would have to agree on, the whole team, because I didn't want strife in our offices, between us. It was really important that this be a really lovely place to work where people were supported and there wasn't any drama. And I think we've done pretty well at at maintaining that. Yeah, there are always moments, but I remember the years where they called it the gauntlet and somebody would have to come in and they'd have to be approved by all of us before we bring them on. But you know what? In those early years, that was really important to have a really cohesive team. Yeah. Well, in a lot of what you're describing, and it really does come down to the people. Absolutely. And I'm curious because Derek and I now we're met with the same kind of opportunities and challenges of finding the right people. What was your strategy of finding people? And I'm happy to share kind of what what our experience has been, you know, over the last few years. But how did those people come to Millennium? God, (laughs) in the beginning, it was people would just show up. It was amazing. I mean, there were a couple of folks in the beginning that came and left for various reasons. But I think really at the heart of it was when Jenny Scanlon, who was my colleague and who you both know so well and was helped me really build Millennium when she came on board and the two of us really became a team, not unlike you both are, we really bounced things off of each other. So if somebody came to us, many times we got the informational interview from the schools. I think, Orrin, that's how you came on, (laughs) you know, to see what it was like to be a therapist and to ask questions for a project for their beginning in their master's program. And we'd meet those folks and go, this is a really great gal or this is a really great guy. Well, let's keep in touch with them and bring them on. And finding the interns. Once we started to bring on interns, and that was very early on, 
The other thing that I looked for was, has this person done their own work? Have they taken care of whatever they need to take care of in their own backyard before they go look into somebody else's? And that was probably the key for me. I wanted to know that this person was grounded and solid and had done their own work. Yeah. So over the years, kind of what were the trends that you saw that were kind of helpful in maintaining Millennium's growth? And ultimately, kind of, I'm curious, what was it like when you were kind of ready or kind of saw an opportunity to transition and kind of allow Millennium to kind of pass the baton to the next people in charge? The next generation? Yeah. (laughs) I think one of the biggest trends was the expansion of the understanding of addiction all the different ways that addiction can manifest itself. And certainly one of the things that was pivotal for that was me finding myself getting the training in sex addiction, having Dr. Patrick Carnes become a mentor. I mean, in many ways, Millennium Counseling Center wouldn't exist if he hadn't pushed the baby bird out of the nest and said, you need to go do this in Chicago. And I did. And so I think the fact that sex addiction is out there now, gaming, computer addiction, you know, all the different types of addictions that we are recognizing. I also think the the lack of stigma on depression and anxiety and other mental health issues has helped. People are much more apt to seek help and it doesn't have the stigma that it did have many, many years ago. I think that has also been a trend that has changed. It's not a big deal for somebody to call and get help. So I think that is what I've seen change in the field. And then, of course, the biggest change was virtual and COVID and all of that. As you both know, I had already made the decision to transition and see where someone else could take Millennium. And this is going to sound really pragmatic and maybe awful, but I was looking at how old I was. And I knew that we had a lease that was going to be up in September of 2020. And I wasn't going to sign another one. (laughs) I was really looking at my 65th birthday coming soon after that. And I thought, you know, you have to pay attention. You know, how long do you want to continue to have this responsibility? And then the other thing is I knew I wanted to move to Tennessee. I had adopted family down here and I was missing a lot of their lives. And so I was at the point where it was like, okay, Millennium's going to make it with or without me. And because I, my goal was to make it not about me, passing it on wasn't going to be hard. And you guys were there. <laughs> you know, we had that little meeting at our Christmas breakfast quite a few years before when I said, this is going to be yours if you want it. <laughs> and you did. And I'm so grateful you did. I think one of the amazing things about that whole process and about you is that any time you have a transition like that, you know, something that you had built and put your heart and love into. Yeah, it's my baby. This is my baby. That's right. That's right. (laughs) And the fact that we're all still so close and feel so positively, all of us, that about how that all happened and how we transitioned that and some people know, some people don't, but you know, you're still very involved in Millennium and still do trainings and see some clients and and just help us out with making sure we're kind of moving this in the right direction. And I think that that's only possible because of how that process went and that we all walked away feeling really good about that. And that doesn't typically happen in these situations. As much as people have that intention, that's not typically how it turns out. So I know we're all super grateful for that, but I think that says a lot about you. Well, thank you. I, you know, really what it says a lot about is God and really hearing from him. And that morning, I'll never forget it when I got the word deep within myself, give millennium to you and Oren, to both of you. And I pulled you guys aside before staff meeting and said, millennium is yours. And you both looked at me like, yeah, well, we kind of know that. We have to talk about it. I said, no, 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 you don't understand. No, it's yours. I'm giving it to you. And I didn't know where that decision was going to take us, guys. But I agree with you, Derek. I am so grateful that God put that on my heart to do because we transitioned in a way that, as you said, nobody else ever does. 
because really at the heart of it was my relationship with both of you was far more important than whatever else was going to happen in that transition. And it kept it very intact. And I tell people, I'm not the owner, I'm the founder, I'm not the owner, and I'm just an employee. And I really like that (laughs) because I'm not responsible anymore. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and and even though I've known you since 2007, when we met for that informational interview, hearing the way you described kind of the early part of Millennium, you know, and how much of that is still around today, where we're really investing in the people. We really want people to enjoy being here and help them become, you know, the people and the therapists that they want to become. And so those core things are still around and and making us kind of the company that we are today. Yeah, I think the last thing I want to say that I think is really important, and I may get emotional. My mother walked into Al-Anon in 1972 because my father was an active alcoholic at the time. And things were really spinning out of control. I was about 15. And she sort of threw that pebble in the pond in 1972. Two and a half years later, my dad walked into AA. And during those two and a half years, he said, I'm not an alcoholic and I'll never go to AA. And she changed how she reacted to him, got help. He walked into AA and he was in his 30th year of sobriety when he died at almost 80. She maintained her Al-Anon connection all of those years, became a therapist herself. And really, Millennium Counseling Center is here and is born from her act and his act in the 70s. Because I'm second generation recovery, when I was in trouble in my 20s, I knew where to go because they had pointed the way. And so really, this is their legacy. i didn't have children. And so Millennium Counseling Center, in a way, is my parents and my legacy to what they did and how you can get better, how you can heal from addiction. You do not have to live with it. You can heal. And you don't know what your simple act of getting help is going to lead to. Because I can tell you right now, in 1972, when my mother went to that first meeting, she had no idea that Millennium Counseling Center and what you all are doing, and what we've done, would be part of that plan. Thanks for sharing that, Anne. I really appreciate it. Mm, It's amazing. I have to give them the credit, them and God. Well, Anne, I'm sure, you know, it's hard to sum up 20 years in 20 minutes in the podcast. (laughs) I think we did pretty well. (laughs) But it's great to get a little bit of a taste of kind of what was going on with you and how this thing kind of was born. And really, I feel grateful that you're still really part of this and that we talk weekly and we'll potentially have you on in the future, and maybe we'll get a little more in depth into other parts of this. I would love that. I think there are all kinds of things that are out there now that we can talk about when it comes to how people not only access help, but, you know, what kind of help people are looking for and how you can do therapy virtually, I think is really powerful and profound. And I think there's there's a lot of topics that can go in that area. Yeah, agreed. I'll just add one thing, and I think that those who know you know this, those who don't should, is that, you know, on this planet, there are some people that are just really special people who do really special things. And you're one of those people. And we appreciate everything you have built. You know, when we meet people and they talk about kind of the reputation that Millennium has had and all those things that you talked about, how you, you know, kind of found people and developed people and what the goals were, that is what we hear about what is thought of us. And so that was crafted by you and understood by us and tried to continue on that path. But we just appreciate you and you're amazing and you've helped so many people and continue to do so. And we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Here's to another 20. Here we go. Here's to another 20.